he reached in over the truck bed while it was rolling backwards. Your hand? His hand is in there. His hand is in there. What do we do? You stuck? Great news, guys. We got our RV back. It's all fixed. Bad news, we had a guy crush his arm while he was unloading it. These RVs are dangerous. Our yeah, RV heavy. weighs seven tons. The tongue weight on this RV is almost 4,000 pounds or two tons. That weight dropped in a man's arm because critical errors were made. Yeah. The wheels were not chalked. The landing gear wasn't down. So we're going to share with you what happened, what we learned, so you never have to experience this. Yeah, we pray to God that none of you, any of you, ever have to go through the stress. And the fear. That all of us went through. For the first time in my life, I thought a man was going to lose his arm. Yeah, this was nuts. This was insane. It happened so, so fast. And Just the two blink seconds. of an eye. Yeah. You know? All right, so super quick, let's backtrack as to why we didn't have our RV in the first place. You see, a while back, we experienced some really, really crazy weather and our RV's roof was damaged during that process. That hailstorm. And they had the RV for those repairs. And so when we got the RV back, we were absolutely delighted because this is our home and we were so, so excited to get our house back. Yeah, guys, we've lived in here for three years full time and we were super excited to get our home back and mm -hmm. so was Sage. Yeah. So when he pulled up, we were super excited. We all came yeah. running we out. We all came running out with our cameras in, yeah. you know, Piper's home. Yeah. Piper's home, this is what we call our rig Piper. And just the sheer excitement. Now this man, Morell from Chicago, yeah. was the hired driver to deliver our rig back to us safely. He did do that. Oh the, yeah. Oh, the yeah. rig was not damaged, he delivered it here. But as soon as uh, the driver parked the RV, there was an issue. We got our RV back. We also got a dead battery. Yeah. <laughs> How are we gonna disconnect? Uh, I'm gonna jump it off. I got another battery with some. Cause I had to do it at two o'clock in the morning. I'm like, <laughs> oh no so i've never really had anybody before deliver me a rig i assumed that um you know certain things were going to be done in order yeah and it was like a minute and a half after we got here once things started going wrong i went to lower the landing gear um to you know just lift it up and stabilize it and then chalk it and the, the batteries were dead. Yeah. And so Morrell went to the back of his truck to grab a battery. Yeah. He dropped the battery in the ground. He hooked up um, uh, jumper cables. And I immediately went to my landing gear. And I was getting a low power warning. Meaning that there wasn't enough power in the battery he had brought to get that landing gear to drop. As I was looking at that and focusing on that. That's the power situation. Morrell went up front and he just released the rig. Mm -hmm. So the rig started to roll back, and I, I, I just couldn't believe, because I'm working in the thing, and then all of a sudden the rig starts moving, yeah. and he says, help, help. Quick, quick. Quick, quick, and I go running to chalk the wheels. Thank right? God there was a random piece of cinder block Just nearby. sitting back, right. Because we weren't at the chalking step. We no. We were just, we were at this step, and all of a sudden, the RV's at this step, and we're not ready for it. And I think that goes to one of the mistakes in that, this is your RV and it's his truck. And so who's in charge here? Like you can't have two chiefs uh, or two captains in a two-man army. You know right, what I mean? Right. And so when John and I are together, I'm captain of the inside and he's captain of the outside. So we have that clear, we know our lane. In this situation, there wasn't even a conversation had about, okay, who's going to do what in what steps? It, because the the problem was no battery, no power. Right. Like we couldn't proceed. Well, it was literally a minute or two it was so into fast. the process. And oh, so gosh. I go running for the cinder block. I don't make it in time. Another big critical error that Morell made because I think he was just overtired. He reached in over the truck bed while it was rolling backwards. I didn't see this, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't even see him. No, because you're in the back of the I'm in the right back, the and then all of a sudden I hear, boom! Oh, and I hear wow. him go, oh, my arm, my arm! And yeah. I'm like, are you stopped? I ran as fast yeah. as I could to get him. I just couldn't believe that he had released the rig like that. Well, because I couldn't believe this had happened so fast. Right. And this is the whole process. And I think 
Another thing was the distraction. We're in excited to get our RV mode. I'm outside, Sage is outside, the dog is outside. But you didn't th you didn't think that you had this say, I never imagined he was going to pull the do pin this. on the grenade. And, and that's also, what it was like. No, no. And also when you when you open the thing to the to the battery, he, he's blocked. It the door opens this way. He cannot see. I he can't has see no what visual. Morel's doing. Morel's climbing up in the back of his fifth wheel and he just he pulled the pin and released yeah. the Release the rig, and, and then that's when all hell broke oh out. Oh gosh! And it was just a matter of seconds. Oh gosh! Um, that I realized morale was stuck between a two-ton rig and his truck. Well, and then the other piece that I think is really important: time is of the essence because we have no idea where the damage is. All I see is this man's entire arm underneath an side. RV. Every second that ticks by that his arm is underneath the RV is another second that he's not getting blood flow. Right. So. Time Time is of the essence, and because we are so far away from you know the city and stuff like that, we're on our own. It's it's going to be at least twenty minutes before help is on the way. And oh, adrenaline took over for me, oh, right? God. I just went into action. And I, I, now, guys, I am not going to lift a two-ton RV <laughs> off of his arm. It was just pure First adrenaline. I think. jumped under, and I actually hurt my back by trying to lift this up. Uh, I'm not going to lift it up. Yeah. Second, as soon as, I mean, it happened within a split second. Yeah. I knew I wasn't going to lift this. But you and still I looked, tried. I still tried, man. Yeah. It just adrenaline took, I want to get that man's arm out of there. Yeah, yeah. And then the next thing I knew, the next thing that popped into my head was get the skid steer. The skid steer was about oh my 70. God. 25 yards away. So I jetted over to the skid stairs, jumped in. Uh, Mercedes was with him. Yeah. She's calling 911 because as soon as he said, she looked at me and said, what do we do? What do we do? I said, call 911. Yeah. Call 911. And then I went running towards the skid stair, jumped in the skid stair. It might have taken 45 seconds to get 75 yards in the skid stair. And I, and I had no idea how I was going to lift this up. Yeah, where do you lift it? And I was just going to tear the RV apart, but this it was coming here. off his arm. Yeah. And as I made the turn, the landing gear was about an inch and three quarters oh off the ground. Thank God. So I was oh. able to slip underneath that with the bucket. Now, now mind you, his arm and hand are in there, so I knew I had to be. I had to get surgical on this thing. Yeah. If I had rocked the RV or moved the You'd RV, make it worse. Be more damage. Yeah. And so God gave me just enough room that I slipped that bucket underneath and then I lifted it up. Oh. But that's when the next problem happened. So yeah. I get it up off of him. I do see him clear out of the rig. Yeah. But, but then I what? couldn't get out of the skid steer. He's stuck in the skid steer. I have no visual of him because he's on the opposite side of the RV. I do not have extra and I, vision. I, and I can't see them. What's yeah. going on? So I'm, 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 with I'm stuck in the skid steer. I'm screaming Mercedes, but she can't hear me. I can't hear him for anything. Because when the bucket is up on the skid steer, it's got bulletproof glass. Yeah. So I was stuck in there. I could not open the door to get out of the skid steer, but maybe four or five inches. You saw And I'm screaming bloody murder to tell, you know, Mercedes do this. And, and, I'm of no use to him. And I was stuck in there. Yeah. I could All I could do is lower it and get out, which was not an option for yeah. me. Yeah. So I went to my phone. There was one guy here at the, at the resort, oh Mark, and thank God Mark was here. Yeah. Because I called Mark and I said, I've got an emergency. Get down here quick. And, and he I just hung like, out. Yeah, 20 seconds. He come so flying like, down yeah. on what he called his hog, right? You he's gotta got this see little, the hog. He's got this little <laughs> Coleman mini bike that he flies around on. Mark came down, and thank God. So I yeah. open the door. I'm screaming, "Get chalk the tires!" And then I'm, I'm yelling orders at yeah. him. Yeah. But so is Morel order uh, yelling orders at him. So I scream at everybody to shut up and focus on me. Yeah. No. I'm screaming like Mark, focus on me. Ignore him. Yeah. He's in shock. Yeah. Right. He's yeah. in shock. Yeah. And so Mark ran, got some chalks. We were able to um, lift the rig up a little bit more, get the tailgate down, but then the umbilical cord. This is how quickly he released it. This is how quickly he the pulled that pin. The umbilical cord was still attached. Yeah. So we get the umbilical cord out. Mark was, thank God Mark was well, there. Well, he has a fifth wheel too. <laughs> yeah, so thank God Mark knew exactly what to do. Yeah. Um, he got inside of Morel's truck, he backed it up just enough to get the, And it was Morel. What was crazy about Morel, as soon as he released, yeah. Morel went to work. Before you do that, you gotta, you gotta lower your gate and pull your truck He's away. Walking. But his hand got smushed. Okay. He was.
still working. He was still working, trying to lift the gate, and I'm in the uh, I'm I'm in the skid steer, going out of my mind. Because he had saying, zero control. Sit down. Yeah. I had no control. I couldn't do anything yeah, but scream powerless. and yell. He's and powerless. I couldn't turn off the skid steer because no. I was afraid that the hydraulics might drop yeah, back no, down again. No, you were so I was stuck. I I, I mean I was stuck. No. I couldn't do anything except for pray to God that this was going to turn out okay. Well, no, okay, and then to make matters worse, that's on the right side of the RV. We have a whole other dilemma on the left side of the RV because I'm on the phone with 911. Oh. They are far away, so you need to like call them as early as possible to you get them in seconds. route. Yep. No, I did. Luckily, I was filming and I was filming with my phone, so I was able to immediately like just call 911 on my phone, which was awesome, right? So I'm sorry I didn't get the best footage, guys, but my priority was not. <laughs> yeah, this was not to shoot video. <laughs> yeah, my priority was like I just. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, I was so freaked out. You'll see in the in the film that like my I'm just I'm in pure shock mode, and then as soon as he like his hands out, the first thing he says to me is, "I gotta call my wife." Excuse me. No. It's a little. What do you need? You want to call my wife. No, his hand looks so small. Mm. Hello, 583 Thunder Canyon Drive. They're getting a paramedic here. Which, by the way, I mean, that's a beautiful sentiment <laughs> that you want to call your wife. But it was a critical error. Mercedes was still on the phone with 911. I have 911 on one ear. I have his wife on the other. I'm in freak out mode. I Jeez. keep telling the kid like to get out of the way and the dog to get, get out, out of the way. way. And again, I'm stuck in the skin. Yeah. I can't see any of this. No, we're... Th so, and then... I, I say, okay, I am not in charge of comms in the event of a disaster. No. I say, his hand has been, um, his hand is no longer there. We've been using it. Hand 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 so, so, okay. No, his hand, no, no, no. His hand is no longer under the RV. I don't know what it is. He just crushed his arm. But it got smushed okay. under the RV. It got smushed under the RV. Hold on, hey, hey. I cannot open this door right now. His hand is off. What she meant to say is the rig was off, off the hand. And she's on the phone with 911. And, and his wife heard his me wife, say that. His hand is off. And, and then she, she flipped. Both out. of 911 and his wife at the same time are like, what? Right. And so, in the event of an emergency, like the inviting a non emergency person to the emergency was an error. She needed to be called once, like. Things were settled down. Yeah, a little bit. And, and, and not by me, because I was not in a position to, mm. to talk to so her. The number one rule here is stay calm, guys. <laughs> stay calm. I was, I'm time. good at that. <laughs> I, I just went to work. I know, but you want the blood out of it, though, right? That's what's going to make it hurt. So I knew what I needed to oh, do. He was. I relied on. I him. just was flying around, but when I got trapped in in the skid steer, that's when I was losing. We had my our mind. captain unavailable, and right. he was. And, and and okay, I gotta say this, John, from the bottom of my heart, there is no human on this planet that can piss me off more than you. <laughs> but you know what? You're the man because I had no clue what to do, and you did. And had you not been here, I can't drive a skid steer. I can't drive a tractor. My best thought was like, oh, let's get yeah. a crowbar. I mean, yeah. I have no concept of what to do. That's another point. Thank God we were here when you dropped the rig off. No, thank God you were here when you well, dropped no, the rig off. No, thank God because, somebody was here. Because I, I wouldn't have known the mechanics of what to do. And he's, I don't know what I'm looking at. And he's at. climbing up and pulling the pin on the grenade. And, and, and that's I don't when even know exploded. what that means. I, I, I was of no use there because... Had I known more about the process, I could have said, wait, it's not this or it's not this, but I don't know enough about the process. So here's the other problem. We have invested a lot of money at Thunder Canyon in safety equipment. We have like a class A, no, we have a class A uh, first aid kit. We have a class A, um, the boom, boom, like an AID or yeah, whatever it's called. Yeah, whatever that thing is. But guess what? I have no clue how to use it or what to do. So right. I could not administer any first aid but i didn't want to touch his bones that were in bad places because i didn't want to move something the wrong way and i don't even know what Mercedes i should be was doing in shock and she was shaking so bad i was shaking you know terribly. and then thank god mark was there because mark was able to i'm screaming at him go get a four by four yeah you know go get it underneath it. the tongue so i can balance it just to get the rv just to get the skidster back so i can get out yeah once i got out i, I felt a little bit more control and then I was able to move around a little bit more. I come around the corner. Mercedes has this 
big emergency kit, right? First aid kit out. out. She had the heart things out. No, I didn't take the heart (laughs) things out, but I took everything else out. But everything was on the chair, and Morel, I did great. He was tough. He's a tough man. We're more traumatized than he Well, you were traumatized. I was was scared. Yeah, she was shaken violently. So then to add to the confusion, I finally get out of the skid steer, and as I get out of the skid steer... The ambulance comes, but right as the ambulance comes, somebody pulls their RV out in front of the ambulance, and the ambulance gets hung up out there for like three or four minutes. That really pissed me off. Oh, no, he's going to block the the ambulance. They can still get around, but, man, does he have bad timing. Mercedes got really upset. That was so frustrating. Mark went back in the hog and got got the uh, got the ambulance to turn he around. He rerouted the um, the ambulance how to get down to the campground so that he could access where we were. It was rough. It was scary stuff. Well, and it was just like you solve one problem and then you have another problem. So okay, good news. The ambulance yeah. is on its way, but we have to wait and, and do all this yeah. stuff. Good news. The ambulance is here. Oh, but the ambulance can't get here because the, the road is blocking them. If this had happened, if he had been under the gate of the truck, God, yeah. this kind of accident could easily decapitate or smush someone. This is very easily deadly. And I'm not trying to be uh, alarmist in this. I think it's important to call it what it is. You know, at this point, it's about 6 o'clock at night. It's just starting to get dusk outside. The hospital from here is about 53 minutes. It's uh, Chattanooga Hospital. That's another problem is that the closest hospital, they have to take 20, 30 minutes to get here. But then once they get you, it's, it's another, an hour till you get to the hospital. It's another hour to get there. And the most important thing is getting the rig off of him. His arm was in this dent right there. So Morel's arm, as soon as it started rolling, he should have cleared. He should have cleared. His arm was here. And he took really bad damage to his fingers. I think he's got multiple broken fingers or a broken hand. Because it sat right on there. Luckily, the rest of his arm was back here where the dent is. See it? And what that did was it crushed his arm. And actually, the rest of the truck protected the arm from getting completely destroyed. But his fingers are a mess. So all I could do was figure out how to get it up first. I ran to the rig first. It's just stupid, right? (sighs) Adrenaline. So I went over and tried to lift it, and there's no way I'm going to lift that. That you're talking about 35, 3,600 pounds sitting on his arm. So I ran down, grabbed the skid steer, got over the other side, and I had no idea if I had the room to get the bucket underneath one of the landing gear to lift it up. I was just going to grab the top of the rig and destroy it if I had to to get it off Morel's arm. Luckily, there was a little bit of room, about an inch and three quarter, just enough for me to slide under. If it was any lower, I couldn't have done that. And the reason why is if I try to slide in, I did not want to move that on his arm whatsoever. It would have destroyed his hand. I was able to slip under that landing gear, and I lifted it right up off his hand, which released him. But boy, was that scary, guys. When you're disconnecting or connecting a rig, and anybody comes up to start talking to you or tries to trip up a conversation, either stop what you're doing or tell them to leave. You need to focus, especially at this point, when you're detaching or attaching. So focus 100% on what you're doing. And, you know, um, I guess tonight I'm going to be waiting for a phone call from Morel. They took him to Chattanooga Hospital, Tennessee, which is about 45 minutes an hour away. I'll go pick him up. The guy, he has no ride and he lives in Chicago. So I'll shoot up. I'll pick up Morel tonight from the hospital. Either let him stay here with us or, but thank God everything worked out okay. But boy, were there some serious lessons in this one. Thank God Mark was here. I'm inside the rig. And when I lifted the rig up and got him loose, I couldn't open my door because my bucket, the bucket levers were too high. So I couldn't get out of the rig and I couldn't get Mercedes attention. And she was, you know, she was helping him. And so thank God Mark was here. I called Mark right away and I said, get down here. We got an emergency. So Mark, I'm flying down in what he calls his hog, his little mini bike that he bought. Thank God Mark was here. God is so good. We got, we had everything we need. That turned about out as best it possibly could have turned out. Um, and thank God Morel's okay. He's probably got a few broken fingers. No, hopefully not too many broken um, uh, bones inside of his hand. But we're going to find out. And we'll let you know and give you an update on what happens with Morel. And his poor wife was on the phone with Mercedes. She's freaking out. Mercedes calls her out you know, on, on Morel's phone saying, hey, I'm with your husband. He crushed his arm. 
But uh, anyways, she's got our phone number. What do you think, Sage? What happened to that guy's hand? It's smushed. It's smushed, huh? But he's okay, right? Yeah, but the doctor fixed his little hand. Yep, the doctor's going to fix his hand, right? Yeah, and to the dentist. And the dentist? What's the dentist going to do for his hand? The dentist works on teeth. All right. You know, so then it was just some, it was a waiting game. Luckily, we had Morel's wife's name. We kept in contact with her. Of course, yeah. we're getting updates on, yeah. on Morel in the hospital. At first, they said there was three broken uh, bones in the hand, but that his arm was fine, which, <gasps> thank God, I thought there could have been so much damage, mm -hmm. you know. And so around 11 o'clock that night, I went in, I picked uh, Morel up at the hospital. Brought um, him back to his I truck. I got him back to his truck, and we offered to let him sleep in the RV that yeah. night. You know, we had made a bed. I got the heat turned on. I plugged everything in and got it nice and warm. I he thought was he was so tough. He's like, no, I got to drive. I got to get to that. I got to get to my wife. I got to get to my, I gotta get to my brother's house in Memphis. Some and crazy so, lady told my wife my hand was off, so right. now I got to so, go see her. Yeah, so that's what happened. Yeah, so that's what happened. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
We're super excited to announce that our store is now open. We are distributors because we own the campground and we can get you the best prices on the best products. So please support our channel. Um, go to our store, purchase all of your products at our store. We, there's no better price you'll ever find on the internet than what been at, at our store. My hope is that you guys never ever have to experience what we went through. And one of the things that we pride ourselves in this channel is just sharing the good, the bad, and the ugly. So we really hope our next video is a heck of a lot more positive than this last one. But you can count on us to share when we make a mistake or when something scary happens, we're always gonna be real with you guys because we don't want any of you guys to ever have this experience. And maybe that's why these experiences do happen to us is because we are so honest about it. Yeah. And, um, and you know, hopefully this video will help you not ever have to go through the stress and the suffering that Morel went through. We'll see you in the next video. How old are you, sir? He's a little bit so good. We're going to you. My name is Mercedes. Just He's okay. He's really okay. Hold on one second. Okay, okay. Can you send it? Can you send it? Can you send it? Can you send it? I'm on the other line with his wife, though, so I have both of you on the line. Yes, okay. Yeah. Okay. You're getting him in route right now? Okay, I'm going to talk to his wife right now. All right. He's, he's, he's walking. He gave me the phone. He said, you need to call my wife. He's, but his hand is hurt. I see you. Cheese. He's in, he's in Alabama. We're in northern Alabama. It's Ida, Alabama. We're pretty much, we're really close to Fort Payne. Look, see? Look at that. Look at that picture. What'd you need? Um, we're really close to the Tennessee border. We are like, uh, 45 minutes away from the Tennessee Mark. border. He's running um, away. We're like 45 minutes away from Shot. His hand looks so okay. We need a doctor to fix his hand. Okay. okay. His hand looks so exposed. So it's yeah. Yeah. Okay. His hand looks so. Yeah, right here. What you are you giving him for the broken, for the broken hand? Cut the wheels on the on the RV. Don't give him anything. So How long are you? How long should I get here? Ten or fifteen minutes. If it's in there, it's gonna be here. They're on the ground. I'll put this on the other side too. Okay. I'm coming. Okay. 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 Back his truck up just a few inches so he can open his gate. Okay. Um, Ten minutes ago. Skippy, come here. I call my son. My son's a paramedic. Yes. I call my daughter. I'm, do you need your immediate help? What was that, ma'am? Skippy, come here. She said 10 or 15 minutes. Are you doing nothing? No, it's not like, it's not like a minute. Okay. 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 Okay.
to let it down. I think they're like less than 10 minutes out. What's your name? Oh, Morel. Because they're already coming. Okay, thanks. Thanks. I don't know. Are you talking to me? Are you? Who are you talking to? Probably me. Okay. Oh. What does he want from me? What do you want? I got it. I got it. I'm good. I would get. I would get it up above. Did you guys? could stand to do this to keep the blood out of it and help you know if you rest it i don't know maybe, yeah i know but you want the blood out of it though right that's what's going to make it hurt so, so they should be really close because they were 10 minutes away do they know how to get back here do, does somebody need to run up there and meet them i don't know oh there you go it's just this one oh there you go okay Of this. Okay, get that out of there. Okay. Don't worry about the RV. Don't worry about that shit, man. We're, we're worried arm. about you. Everything could be fixed. Yeah. <laughs> Just stuff, dude. Worry about your yeah. yeah. So I do have finger splints and I have like heavy duty first aid stuff. I have zero knowledge of really how to use it. So when they get here, I'm gonna be like, here's everything we have. Is it is it an ambulance or yeah the the, oh, no, the no. ambulance is yeah, coming. Yeah. Looks like it. Yeah. Yeah. His arm was in there. The band is from him. His arm. Oh bummer. Yeah. Oh my gosh, dude. You're lucky. You weren't. Yeah. Worse. Yeah. None of it is on camera, though. No, I, I turned it on and put it in the corner and then started, like, because I called my mom up first and then I called him from this phone. The scariest thing was not knowing how much of the hand was impacted yeah. because it looked like your whole arm was in there. Yeah. It, it, it was just my finger, but the way it was. They gotta have a slant in there. Yeah. But it looked like the whole arm. So I could run up there and meet just in case. That's was so scary. Yeah. I mean, we had like a crowbar, but I don't think a bar would have worked. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, he's gonna block the, the ambulance. They can still get around, but man, does he have bad timing. They're 
coming right now. They can come around though. No, 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 sweet. You don't have to come down. I mean, uh, Emily's you know, right there around the corner. Who's, who's Stefan. Um, come on, Stefan. Oh, they didn't know. They didn't know. Come on. Let me get on part of Come on, Stefan. I'll be fine. We need them to, uh, yeah. yeah. Do the x ray. Get them around. We got, um, um, we saw some tracks of some big things, um, and we got four chickens. So That's the extent of our oh, okay. living no country. Like there, that. he saw some tracks. He really? saw some tracks. Yep. Thank you for showing them the way. Yeah. It's fingers. It's not hand. It's not wrist. Here. Absolutely, John. Okay. He's late to no, leave the truck leave here. The, the truck. Can you get these in it? Yeah. It's okay if I pull it right up here. All right. You got everything you need. Wallet, phone, everything. Okay. You can't record it here. Okay. okay. 